If you consider yourself an empath, then you have a huge problem. And your problem, of course, is not like being too nice and all. Your problem is that you say yes to things you don't want, which makes you a people pleaser and nobody likes people pleasers, not even yourself. To consider yourself being an empath probably stems from the point that you were raised by parents or one parent that had some sort of anger issues or that couldn't handle their emotions very well. And you were raised in a, in a household where over the next corner or with the next word or the next behavior you show, some sort of rage would arise or some sort of drama would arise. And with this, you probably always had the feeling that you are running on eggshells all the time, that you have to choose your words very wisely and carefully so the other person, like your parent, is not having a rage explosion around you and is throwing furniture uh, towards you. And that your behavior is like has to be on point. You cannot be too late from the party or you cannot make noise in the morning while they're still sleeping. This puts you in a place of like not trusting your own instincts or like to, to not uh, feel home or feel free in your place, in your home. And in a surrounding like this, it's no wonder that you were in constant survival mode because you probably had an encounter with this parent that had some sort of rage issue and probably punished you with violence as a kid. And with this, you, you took it like so personally, of course, like you were punished with violence and it hurt and it made you sad and you couldn't express yourself and you learned that your behavior or you, the way you, you think and the way you speak is wrong. So you learned that your emotions are wrong. And, and with this, some sort of coping mechanism, some sort of regu regulation started. And now you were grown up and this regulation became the habit of pleasing people. And pleasing people doesn't sound so bad in the first place because who doesn't like to be treated well, right? So like who doesn't like to, to be um, asked what, how their day was or like what their needs and wishes are? And this to be taken care of, like this is a good thing, but the bad thing is when you do it as some sort of survival mode, because you learned at some point in your life that your wishes, your needs are worth nothing and you should take care of the needs of others because if you don't do this, they will explode and you will have a hard time again. So like being like pleasing people or being a people pleaser is like you being in a constant survival mode because you think that you don't matter, that your needs and your wishes don't matter. So and what a people pleaser is thinking and how they're behaving is like, I don't have any needs, it's fine, but I am very good at taking care of your needs. So if you need anything, just tell me and I will do it right away because I need you. And also if you grow up in an environment like this where you cannot be sure how your parent will react in any given second, your caregiver, how your caregiver, the person you rely on as a child will react in any given second when you say this or when you behave like that, this turns you mad, like this this forms this coping strategy where you cannot be sure where you have like always where you always be in this this constant survival mode and you become very good at reading minds and reading moods and of course you cannot be you're, you're not going to be a mind reader you cannot like literally reading the thoughts of, uh, of somebody else but this uh, this mind reading phase is like um, if i do this if i say this this, my parent would probably react like this. There's a 60% chance that my parent will react like this. So the chances are good that I say this and I hope his or her mood is good. So uh, I will um, count this in in, my, in in this reaction. So I am pretty good to ask if I can go out play with my friends today. And this is not an environment a child should thrive or can thrive or should grow up in, right? And the child then decides way too often that they should not ask for what they want or they should not express their needs or they, they become like very silent or um, hide themselves in, in their rooms. And this is so freaking sad. This is not an environment a child could thrive in. And this is no wonder that so many people out there think that they are not good enough because they learned in their homes because of some parent that had anger issues that they should not express themselves. And this makes me freaking sad. It happened to you probably. It happened to me a million times. This is sad. And this was devastating when I, when I found that out. And this was like for me, when, when, I, when I found this out, this was like a new, a new chapter of my life I opened up there. Because when I was younger, my father had these anger issues. He was some sort of choleric. And I was never sure how he would behave. And my mother also had no clue like how he would behave when she said this and that. 
so the environment was like very bad like i i remember many times where i didn't speak up or didn't say what i wanted or became very silent or hid in my room because i knew if i will be loud now or express myself my father would be angry and he would shout or like when i was younger he would do like some sort of i would say like punish me with violence and this is this made me made me be a silent kid and i remember my mother telling all the um, all the neighbors and friends and so that um that, that she's so proud of me that i'm so such a such an easy kid that i just go to my room and play by myself and be silent all day that she did not know that i was there at home and this is like sad like a kid should not be silent a kid should be heard and um kids should express themselves but like i remember when i was 18 i immediately started to look for places where i can live so i do not have to live with my parents anymore uh, because like they drained my energy so much and i wanted to be away from from all this um running on eggshells all the time and to be fair, my parents are loving parents. I had a very, very good childhood. It was just like this behavior of my father that he had back then when I was a child and like in the early years of my teenage years um, that was this, this running on eggshells all the time. And it made me in some sort of like being this empath. And you probably had, um, had encounters like this or, or situations like this in your life it, with, with some sort of caregiver or some, some authority figure, like probably in school or whatever. That, um, and, and that could be also like your classmates or the bullies in your school or whatever. And you try your best so they will not see you and so they cannot bully you. And you always try to, to fit in and like be invisible. And this is bad because you sacrifice your own needs in order to be liked by others or not to be heard again. This puts you in a survival mode and you say yes to things you really don't want. But the goal for your, for, for your inner child, for yourself, is just like to, to be safe, to provide safety. And you learned in a very young stage in your life that it is probably the better way to not express your needs, your wishes, your emotions, because this leads to more harm and you don't want harm, you want to survive. So you become good at mind reading, at mood reading. Is this a good situation I am in uh, to express my needs now? If not, then I will, I will not express them, I will be fine. But of course you're not fine. You, you, don't just, you just don't express your needs and you wait for a better situation. But probably the better situation never arises and you learn by the years, year by year, you learn that it's the better way, the better solution, the better thing to not express your wishes, your needs, your emotions. And fast forward 10 years, 20 years, you're in your 40s, you're in your 50s, I don't know. Um, and you find out that you probably don't have real friends um, and people cannot connect with you because you build a heart like you build a wall around your heart because you do not want to be heard again you do not want to be um want to be punched again or you don't want this drama or this angriness or anger around you this rage around you 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 still running like after so so many years you're still running on eggshells um because you had this encounter in your past and this is just the people-pleasing part I'm talking about here for ages now, but I really wanted to dive deep in the fawning behavior we have here. And fawning is a, is a is some sort of fourth behavior we have, we mammals have, and you probably heard about the fight, flight, freeze response. And the fawn response is something that we, especially we mammals have. And I wanted to, to read the definition right now because like I cannot remember it. So like bear with me when I read it, uh, because like the fawn response um, is a behavior that aims to please, appease, and pacify the threat in an effort to keep, you safe, to keep yourself safe from further harm. This is exactly what people pleasers do. They please, appease, or pacify a threat before it arises. So um, with, with all the co-workers or, or um, authority figures or like the caregivers or like because they, they learned in their past that their caregiver or some sort of authority figure um, would explode in anger if they did X and Y and Z. So um, they scale it up to their grown-up life now and they try to pacify the threat before that. 
because they're always in this constant survival mode. And we see that also like in dogs that were um, mis abused, they were mistreated. And when they are in a shelter and so on, they, they, they come from a survival like a surrounding where they, um, uh, where they were mis mistreated or like be, being uh, hit and, and abused. Um, they, they, they bring you their toy um, in the, because the toy makes them happy and they think when, when, I bring, when I bring this human this toy, he will not hit me. And this is so sad because like any creature on this world, any being on this world that uses this fawning is just like crying for help and being so sad and just wants to be free. But any being that uses this fawning behavior, this fawning response, is trapped, it's like being a prisoner of their own fear. And they just want to be loved and they want to be taken care of and being told that the environment is safe now. You don't need to be in a survival mode anymore. And from this on also, like if, if this is like a constant follower, a constant, um, yeah, a constant follower in your life, this, this falling response, the survival mode, then anxieties issue arise, of course, and the trust issues arise, and you'll be alone all your life, and you cannot trust any specific person in your life. You 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 cannot attract um, a healthy relationship, and I don't like to 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 use the word healthy actually in a way because like what is healthy, what is normal, whatever. But um, we we then get into relationships that are familiar to us. And this is where all the narcissist stuff like comes from then. Because we look for things that we are familiar with. So we look for a partner that will treat us bad. We look for friends that we cannot trust. We look for a job that is not safe, that is not secure. We look for these things because we, in, in our deep thinking, in our deep mind, in our subconscious mind, we only know that we have to be in an environment that is not safe. We have to be in survival mode. And if we are not in survival mode, we will freak out and we will take care of that, that we manipulate this environment so we can be in a survival mode again. And this sucks, right? And, but there's a way out. There's a way out of it. And it's always through the fear. You always have to decide to not to go back into the fear. Decide for love. Decide for joy. And if you decide for that, you can be brave again. Like bravery is, is, like, is, is a higher vibing emotion than fear. And if you are brave already, you can, be, uh, you, you can, you can have hope again. And if, you are, if you're having hope, you can be joyful again. And if you can be joyful, you can feel love again. So love yourself, like I said it in the last video. Actually, this video you should actually watch because frankly I think it's my best video so far and actually you should watch this video because if you're a people pleaser or an empath you probably have a broken heart all the time and this is why you have the broken heart all the time and there's a solution in it to fix that broken heart and to spoil your bit it's self-love so watch this video and I will see you in the next one